we're having a look now at pulses and waves. We can generate a pulse if we allow a stone to drop or to fall into a pond. A pulse spreads out across the water. Clapping your hands would generate a sound pulse. Switching an electrical circuit on and off generates a pulse of a radio wave. Plucking a stretched string generates a sound pulse. So that's what pulses are. When we have a look at both pulses and waves, one of the things that we note is the movement of the particles. Here, for example, in this wave, we've got water, part water, which moves up and down. And the wave moves in that direction. So it's a different movement. But the thing about both pulses and waves is that they carry energy. And in this instance, you can see that um, energy, electrical energy, is generated from the wave. So again, illustrating that waves carry energy, but the particles are not carried with the wave. They go backwards and forwards or up and down. Again, we see this illustrated here in this machine where we've got waves which come in or pulses and they lift these floats up and down and that generates electricity, showing that waves carry energy. Again, light waves carry energy. They can make things move or light pulses, otherwise known as photons. Sound, a pulse from an explosion, will do a lot of damage, again, demonstrating that sound contains energy and that energy is carried by waves. So the difference then between pulses and waves a pulse, in a sense, is part of a wave. So here, for example, that would be a pulse. Uh, one wavelength like this, that would be a pulse. Or something like this, that's a pulse. Whereas here we've got a continuous stream of pulses all joined together, if you like. So that is a wave. So that's what we're talking about when we're talking about pulses and waves.